everybody. My name is Elliot Fisk. I am one of the artistic directors of Boston Guitar Fest, along with Saire Meneses. And it's a great pleasure to speak to you a little bit about this year's Boston Guitar Fest. This is our 18th straight year, celebrating the guitar within an interdisciplinary and international context. That's our goal. Our goal is to have the guitar kind of be the focal point, the central point, but to pursue outwards all the different things that uh, the guitar suggests. Uh, probably the most universal instrument on the planet, although the classical guitar may not be the most universal form of the guitar, but it happens to be the one that most fascinates me and the one to which I've given my life. And uh, we wanted to sort of set a real monument, a living monument, not, not some old stone, you know, frozen thing, but uh, a real living monument to the guitar and to its many applications and to the inherent message of music, which at this time in history, where we are surrounded by so much evil and so much hatred and everybody at each other's throats, seems to me that music is right. Music may not be winning, but music's right about uh, what humanity ought to be doing. And so we wanted to, this little festival, which we uh, organize every year with all our heart and all our soul and all our good intentions, we wanted this festival to, to, to be a part of what we hope will be a solution for some of these problems that afflict humanity and to try to get outside of these uh, competing currents and find a place of, of shared personhood that, ex that would extend to all races, all cultures, all peoples, all people all over the world. So we uh, decided to put it um, in, the, in the final week of June leading into the uh, July 1st, 2nd weekend. So we will begin on the 27th of June. Our venues will be two, tw what I call them twin venues, uh, about six blocks away from each other. The first being the Multicultural Center, which will be our uh, locus for most of the concerts. And also this marvelous new foundry, which has just been renovated uh, just up the street from the Multicultural Center. These are two very uh, exciting venues, very intimate, um, very much community oriented. And we're very happy for the first time in our history, actually, to be presenting at these two new venues. We love the staff there. We love the atmosphere when you walk in the building and we just think it's a great place to, uh, to bring music. Um, as I said, the festival starts on the 27th of June. We've always made it uh, a goal to foster opportunities for young people. Uh, and so some of our great faculty will be performing uh, on day one, including uh, two who have been students of mine at the New England Conservatory for some years, Thatcher Harrison and Alex Romanoff. Uh, and they'll be joined by Kaylee Connors also, uh, three people administering our Young Guitarists Workshop. And uh, most of them will be performing on night one, along with some of our great faculty, Saira Meneses, who's co-director of the festival, uh, Adam Levin, who's been just a fantastic uh, support to us, and uh, Lautaro Montilla, who will also be performing some of his great improvisations. So that's night one. Uh, night two will be the final round of our international guitar competition, where five finalists will be strutting their stuff, doing great things for us. That's night two on the 28th of June. On the 29th of June, we go back in time to the Renaissance, and we are presenting the marvelous lutenist, Nigel North, who will be performing music from the Italian Renaissance by Francesco da Milano. Francesco da Milano was the greatest lutenist of the first half of the 16th century. And uh, he was also called Il Divino, Another person who was called Il Divino about a little bit earlier was Michelangelo. And so uh, Da Milano was on the lute, on the, on the beautiful Renaissance lute, something akin to what Michelangelo was for sculpture and painting. The other composer in Nigel North's recital on the 29th of June is the famous John Dowland, an almost exact contemporary of Shakespeare and very much imbued with the spirit of Shakespeare. Um, he, like Shakespeare, uh, had, a, had a strong connection to Italy, and so his music is a marvelous cosmopolitan mix of 
the sacred and the profane of what was going on in Elizabethan uh, England and on the continent as well. The next night, we're very happy to present two of the younger generation of performers. We lead off with uh, Jorge Caballero, originally from Peru, a famous virtuoso who plays some fantastically difficult stuff uh, with wonderful aplomb. And he will be followed by Gohar Bardanian, who will come up from New York City for us, although she's originally, I think, maybe even born in Armenia at any rate she will share with us some of the treasures from her repertoire. So that's the Friday night, the 30th of June. Finally, on Saturday night, I'll be performing a solo recital. I'll be featuring works from various epics of the guitar's history, um, some Latin American music, some Spanish music, some of the keyboard sonatas of Domenico Scarlatti, which I've transcribed for the guitar, a complete Bach cello suite, the very famous first Bach cello suite, uh, followed again by some more uh, Latin American and finally uh, a Spanish number called Sevilla, an homage to the city of Seville or Sevilla by Albanese. So that's my program on Saturday night. And on Sunday, the final performance is a Sunday afternoon performance. And that basically gives all the student participants a chance to show what they've learned and what they have brought to the festival. Um, and we're very much looking forward to sort of celebrating everybody who's taking part in the festival in the final day on Sunday. So I think it's a very rich uh, uh, selection of sort of evening act activities, concert-like activities, but we've also got some fantastic sort of course options. Uh, our lutenist in residence, Nigel North, will be lecturing on Baroque performance style. He'll be talking about the Basso Continuo, which is the Baroque version of sort of a chord chart and how you can just take a, a bass line and with a few numbers under it and turn it into real sounding, exciting music. He'll be talking about Baroque ornamentation. And finally, he'll be talking about Baroque music as it relates to the principles of rhetoric in oratory. So three very interesting uh, sessions by Nigel North. And last but certainly not least, the world's greatest Bach authority, Christoph Wolf, who is emeritus professor at Harvard and just phenomenal Bach scholar, will be online for us from, direct from Germany. And he'll be speaking to us about uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, whose life and work he has researched so brilliantly for many decades. It so happens this year is the 300th anniversary of Bach's move to the city of Leipzig, which is where he spent uh, practically the last 30 years of his life. And so Christoph will probably talk to us about that, but also about other aspects of Bach's life and work. Again, that will be all online, but we'll have the chance to ask him some questions and discuss with him a little bit afterwards. So we're very kind of excited about that aspect of the festival. And a final online aspect of the festival, which perhaps not so, not so relevant for our American audience, but very important part of the festival is an online program that we do mostly with China and China being 12 hours off from us. It means getting up rather early in the morning for Syra and myself. Um, but we have also teachers from my uh, class in Austria who are based in Europe who will be working in, in, in an individual way with about, we hope, about two dozen young Chinese students. And they'll be teaching them online, but from Europe where that's, the time difference is only six hours. So we're trying to make use of some of the skills we all had to learn during the pandemic when we were condemned to be cave dwellers and we're just sort of broadcasting our concerts out of our living rooms and teaching out of our basements over Zoom and all this kind of stuff. But there is some good that came from that, new techniques that can again link us to the world and make the message of the guitar truly international. Along with the great joy of presenting the festival um, came news of a very tragic event that uh, affects all of us in the guitar community here in America and in fact around the world. Um, one of my dearest friends and one of my greatest colleagues for over half a century has been Bruce Holtzman, who is a professor at Florida State University in Tallahassee and has 
profoundly influenced the development of the guitar in America and in fact around the world uh, ever since he's taken over the job down there in, in Tallahassee. And we had the shattering news of his death in a terrible car accident down in Florida. Uh, he left us on May 6th and we took a long time just, just to get over that horrible news. When we kind of came to, we realized that we had to dedicate this festival to his sacred memory. So mixed with the joy of the music is the sadness at the loss of this great friend and this really rock of Gibraltar for all of us uh, in the guitar community. But we felt we, we should dedicate the festival to his memory and so that's what we've done. And we will be celebrating him in various ways. Um, certainly my concert, my solo concert is specifically dedicated to him and will include pieces that he loved or that he heard me play uh, over the course of our 55 years of friendship. So that uh, concert again is on July 1st, starting at 7.30 in the Multicultural Center in East Cambridge. Hope to see you all there, and please come and celebrate with us. <laughs>